Okay, here we are, part two of this beautiful painting of the Dingle Peninsula. Um, I'm using the same palette, there's no point in switching palettes, I have all the colours already on there, and they're still wet. Um, so, in the last video, we done this lovely sky, and we kind of focus more on the sky, again, keeping it very similar to the previous one that we did. Um, so now, I'm going to continue on with this land, get the ocean done, try and finish the painting. So, brushes at the ready. I hope you enjoyed the last one, by the way. That was a beautiful painting, wasn't it? I'm going to take my medium stubby brush, my little green stubby brush, and I suppose <coughs> um, I could just continue on with some of the ocean, bring that down, and then we'll bring in our land all around that. How about that? How does that sound? Will I name up my colours again? Uh, my colours, the colours I'm using are titanium white, Naples yellow, Nathal Crimson, Cadmium Red, Burnt Sienna, Cadmium Yellow Pale, some Burnt Umber, some Cobalt Blue, some Thalo Blue. And I must add to that a little black. So I need some Lamp Black. Ivory Black. Either one. Black is black. They're both dark colours. I also have a little drop of turpentine in my bowl here. Just turpentine, nothing else. Um, so here we go. I'm going to start bringing this ocean back down now, all the way down, okay? So I'm going to dampen my brush, make it nice and damp, and take off the excess. Uh, let's go just into the centre here now again. So it's still fairly wet, all the paint. I'm going to take some phthalo blue, some cobalt blue, and a little black and then some white now I want to make this a little bit on the bright side and I want to add to that a touch of that crimson colour as well just to make it slightly more pinky now a touch more blue and well, let's just try that so I'm just testing it, I'm just going to test it for now, to see how it looks. Um, do you know what I do need actually? Let me just check what colours I have here. Okay, that's black, alright? So a little bit of confusion there. The bottom one is black. I'm going to remove the black I put here. Okay, like so. And I'm going to put there some cobalt. So cobalt blue. Thalo blue and black. They are the three dark colours we have. So let's take some cobalt blue now into this. And some white. Tiny drop of turpentine. We want this a nice creamy consistency. But we don't want it very, very, very wet either. So I'm going to keep mixing until I get the colour that I want. No, that's probably not a bad colour. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to lighten it slightly. I'm going to bring that colour up into that other colour we have above. Softening it across here and there. And let's go right down all with this all the way down. And mix up plenty of colour when you're doing this. Don't be shy with the colour. So you can see now it's fairly wet, isn't it? And I suppose it's really the way you can judge the colours, what colours you use. I normally kind of look at the sky. So whatever I'm painting, if it's a snow scene, a seascape, a forest scene, whatever. I generally look at the colours on the top half of the painting. Um, if it's a landscape, because those colours will be kind of reflected on the bottom half, or, or on the land, or the, the ocean, whatever the case may be. Them colours, it's normally a good idea to use those colours right through your painting, because I think it helps complement each section, and it's good for the comp composition also. So it kind of, it keeps everything in check all the way down. And it's, it's much easier to get it right. If you understand what I mean. So I'm going here now with this. I'm just filling it in and going over some of the lines as well. Don't worry about that. Soften it off up there very gently.
I'm just pulling it left and right all the time. Left and right, left and right. So, no matter if touch a plum, just touch a plum colour because we can get away with adding this colour because it's in the painting here and there, isn't it? So you will get away with adding that, that bit of colour. So again, left and right all the way across. Now I want to bring some light colours into the ocean as well. So I'm thinking I might kind of lighten it ever so slightly, just here and there. I'll just give my brush a good cling there on my tissue. And I'm going to take some cobalt blue with some white. And I'm going to introduce that colour here and there. Now, it's getting quite light in by the bay in here so I'm just going to make it quite light there and I want to pull it outwards into that darker colour then I'm going to clean my brush again go back into that colour some cobalt blue with some white and let's lighten this a little And let's do it again, little white, little cobalt blue, and let's bring a bit of light colour across there. So I'm just kind of varying the blues. Some will be lighter, some will be darker, because we have a very light spot up there, don't we? So I want to kind of show that reflection in the ocean. If that makes sense. So I want to keep it nice and kind of light and bright across here. But at the same time I don't want to go too bright because I want the waves to to show when I'm putting some waves in here later. So I don't want to go too bright. Now I'm going to bring a little bit of that colour up in this corner. So that colour, I'm just going to take a clean brush now for a moment. That colour was uh, a little burnt sienna with a little red. Um, if my memory serves me right. And I'll take a little touch of burnt umber. And a touch of white. Now it might go green when it mixes with the blue that's already there. So I'm just going to very carefully put it in without mixing too much. And that's easier said than done, isn't it? There, it's just a hint. That's not bad. Just a hint here and there. And also, the colour we have in our clothes, we could introduce a little hint of that as well. So let's take some Naples yellow, white and a touch of the red. And we could add a touch of that just here and there, look. You see, it's only little, it's only little bits here and there, but they do make a difference, they really do. So let's have a look. You see, no, that's not too bad so far, is it? We can add little darks here and there, if we wish. I'm going to take a little flat brush, a small, let me find a small flat brush now, something with a nice flat edge on the brush. That's what I'm looking for. Because I love these flat brushes. Here, I have them now. I've made over my box. Now, look, a nice little flat edge brush. And I'm going to just dampen it very slightly and give it a good dry. So it's pretty much kind of dry. Alright. Let's take some Taylor Blue. And a touch of black. 
and a touch of red. The pinky red now. And let's create some dark areas on this. So we have a cliff area here. Let's create a little dark area just around that. And I'm just flicking the brush left and right. See, and you can see now it's immediately softening into that lighter colour. That's fine. I just want to darken it very slightly. And add a bit of a bit of interest into the painting. Let's put a little bit up here. Okay. So let's take more black. Let's try some cobalt this time. A touch of crimson. Uh, would you like me to zoom in on the painting or do you want to see me mixing? I'm not too sure which you would prefer. Uh, I'll go with this as, as we are, okay? Just for now. I can zoom in there at, at a later stage when we're doing the, um, the, cliff, the, the, the cliffs and getting some detail. I'll zoom in further then, okay? Because I know you like seeing the colours being mixed and I'm trying to judge which is better focus in on the painting or focus out and leave you see the palette leave a comment, see, I see what you think you're the viewer, whatever you prefer now I'm going to bring a bit of dark here, colour coming in here ok, I'm just going to dampen the brush very slightly some black, some cobalt blue and some of that crimson I'm just going to introduce some of that down in here just let it kind of flick around here and there look now we could do some waves like we did in the last one but it's kind of it's so far away, there's not going to be that many really, to be honest. Um, the water is fairly kind of flat coming in. There's no waves crashing about, except in by the rocks and the cliffs. So I don't think there's any need to put kind of big waves splashing about here and there, because it might look a bit funny. Bear in mind, though, this, these things are way off in the distance. So all I'm doing is just creating a little texture on the board, really, that's all. See, it's just a little texture. Um, so yeah, let me just have a look around now. I'm going to take some pink, I'm going to take some white, with a touch of the crimson, and I'm going to add a touch of pink here and there, just to complement the sky. Now, it probably doesn't show very well on camera, but it is there. It's here, don't worry. There's, there's a little pink just flicking through here and there. And I suppose it's more just to add a bit of colour to it, that's all. Now, I think we shall create some, we create some water. Now, first, actually, I want to go up here and just tidy up this bit of land. So I'm going to zoom in. So there we go, I'm just going to tidy up that little corner there, okay? Just add a few little bits to it. Um, let me see now what will I take. What kind of a brush should I use? I'll use the same flat brush, okay? I'll take some burnt umber and I'm going to just add a couple of dabs of burnt umber just here and there and I'm only just thinking create some kind of a rocky areas that type of thing I'm not trying to create anything in particular just add a little touch of interest into the painting off in the distance here because it's so far away you're not going to see very much anyway are you so this really is just to kind of separate the land from the the sea 
just off over here ok just like that and then we could take a touch of Naples yellow and let's imagine there's a little couple of beaches off here and there off in the distance ok just like that and let's take some white on its own and let's just add the odd kind of wave kind of coming in here and there now clean the brush after each time then go back into the white and let's create some waves nice easy waves just coming in and all I'm doing is just flicking the brush with little tiny flicks So, you can see it's just an impression. Um, right, I suppose I'm going to mix a little bit of green for this. I'll take my little flat brush, little medium sized flat brush, I'll take some Naples yellow. So I'm going to take some Naples yellow, um, I'll take a touch of cobalt blue, I'll take a touch of cadmium yellow, and let me just have a look at that now and see what that's like. Okay, it's a little yellowy, so I'll take a touch of um, black. So I want a kind of, not a very, very warm green, but a, a nice landscape green. Um, Perhaps in Bordeaux more. Because these are quite cool up here, these greens are very, very cool. So I want to warm these down very, very, very slightly as well. So I'm just adding a touch of burnt umber into those, just here and there, look. So that's, that's a little bit nicer, isn't it? Now I'll take some black and some burnt umber, just for now, I'm going to fill this in and it kind of comes in and out here doesn't it, here and there. Let's just fill that right in. It's, it's very tricky to get a good uh, a land colour, I suppose you could call it, um, when you're making colours up as you go along. It's very difficult to get the composition right because the photograph I'm working from is just it's just the, the drawing part that I'm following. I'm kind of making colours up now myself as I go along, you see. But it can be tricky when you have nothing to actually go off. So I'm trying to complement colours and make it look as nice as I can. So I'm just kind of trying different colours now. Some some of these colours might not look might not look right, others might look better. Um, but look, it's just trial and error, isn't it? So you try something, if it doesn't work, you just go over it with something else. And that's that's what I'm doing here now. So we have um, let me see now six on Cadmium yellow, and I'll take a dab of black, good dab of black, and let's put a nice rich green in here. And we have some cliffs and all that kind of stuff again, don't we? So let's go back to my small flat brush, and I'm going to take some burnt umber with some black I'll take a touch of that yellow as well because there's a bit of a green in these rocks here but again because of the colours I'm using it's going to look slightly different but I'll make it nice and dark anyway um, 
So let's go along here now with this. And it comes up here and it kind of goes out into the sea a little there, doesn't it? More black, more brown. Um, and I'm just getting a general impression of what's there. Only a general, it doesn't have to be perfect. And sure, it's never going to be perfect, is it? It's never going to be exactly the same. So I won't try and copy it exactly the same. There we are. So I'm just kind of flicking the brush down here and there. Just giving the impression of that cliff face just there. Now we have a nice couple of dark areas there, don't we? And so. And up above that we have another cliffy area coming out just here, don't we? So I'll try and get that in as well. It's great fun as you go along you're kind of learning different things and uh, yeah that's that's what it's all about isn't it but I want to come across Cut across of this, I'm going to cut in front of that one there, which I just did, with some colour. So a very, hmm, a nice light colour. Let's have a look at this now. So look, I'm going to cut in front of that, and that will push it back. Into the distance, won't it? You see? So it's pushed it back slightly. And then we have another little ridge on the top of that one. So some Naples are on some white. And a little kind of a grassy area on top, don't we? I hope you're following. So you can see now what I mean. And I suppose it's more about catching the light, isn't it? So for example here, we could use this now to create some lovely sunlight on that hill just there. Some white, some yellow and a little red. And watch now, let's catch some sunlight. Look, there we go, look at that. Nice warm colour. You see, isn't that just lovely there now? So the sun is just kind of catching it very slightly. I want to take a small pointy brush with some black on my brush. Just thick black paint and I want to darken some of these here and there. Because it needs to be dark, doesn't it? It needs to be nice and dark. And it helps. Let's take a touch of blue on that as well. And we'll darken this one here. And I'm making a little purple out of a little tail of blue and some red. And I'm going to add a touch of purple in there. And this will give some nice deep shadows as well. A little purple in the shadowed areas. Well, there now, how's that? 
Isn't that quite nice? Then I will just stand back gently and take a look at that. And let me move the camera on very slightly for you so you can see. Um, I'm going to create just some little lights here and there on the grass. So I'm taking some cadmium yellow with some white and a touch of Naples. And just see here and there, look. Again, just adding a little texture to it, that's all. See? And some lights on those rocks, how about that? We'll try some cadmium red with some white. The touch of Naples yellow. Again, a nice light colour. Complement the colour in the sky. And a few little dabs just here and there, you see? And we'll do one or two off the distance here. And that will do fine. So let's take a look and see how we're getting on. I might darken some of this up here with some of those dark colours as well. Because I think it needs to be a little bit darker just around the cliff here. Just a little. It's still quite cool, isn't it? I think a little bit dark colour up here would be nice. Yeah, you see, that's quite nice now. So let's get some water on these. With a small pointy brush, I'm going to dip into some cadmium, or some titanium white with a touch of cobalt blue and make a nice light blue colour. I'm just going to go in along here, here and there, and just cut underneath some of those rocks. And it's difficult to see this now at the moment, so I will lighten it slightly. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's better. Little couple of white flakes just in underneath those, that'll kind of sit them down on the water. And you see, you can keep it simple. It doesn't have to be very, very difficult at all. Couple of white flakes, and we'll do the same across the front of this one here. You see, it's just an indication of um, rough water. That's all it is, an indication. And let's bring some in here. And this MDF board now is lovely for this kind of work. It's lovely and smooth actually. And it's fantastic for creating these lovely soft effects. So what about a fan brush? And we put a little bit of spray just around these rocks. What about that? Will we try that? Let's try it. Let's take a small fan brush with a touch of that light colour, so some white and the end of your brush. And look, a little bit of spray here and there. Isn't that lovely? So next what I want to do is there's a little sandy area. Let me zoom back now slightly for you. We have a little sandy area just there coming around the corner. So I'm just going to simply take some Naples yellow with a touch of burnt sienna and I'm going to create a little sandy 
pitch in there, okay? Let's take more nipples. And all the brush strokes are going left to right, okay? Or right to left, left to right and right to left. And let's take some Naples yellow and let's add a touch of Naples yellow up here. So we're giving the indication of some beaches off in the distance up here too. Isn't that lovely? little cyanide in there and then I am going to create with my brush a little um, a kind of a ridge just along where the bank meets the sand so we've a little ridge now this cliff actually comes all the way along here doesn't it So I'm going to pull down straight flat stro strokes all the way down and it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, look, see? So we have a nice little cove in there. And just there, I'm going to put another light spot on that again. So the land kind of comes around, kicks down like that. You see that? And I'll do the same. Just along the top of this one here, and I'll come across here a little, little bit of that. So now it's coming on quite nice, I'd say, isn't it? We could lighten some some of these areas, so we'll go now and put some highlights in here. Let's take some cadmium yellow. Uh, let's take a touch of cadmium red and a good dollop of white and it's going to add some nice highlights to this so let's drag one right along like this look see just creating some texture in the painting that's all little texture add some cadmium white with some burnt cyanide be a nice warm colour then. And then what I'm going to do, see it's just off in the distance and it's only suggesting some little fields and that type of thing. So I'm going to take a dark green with my pointy brush. So I'm going to take some black and some cadmium yellow. Now when I mix it up, you know, I'm going to suggest some little um, separate fields, let's say, okay? So look, some little separate ditches and all that kind of thing, off in the distance. I'll put one up here. Perhaps put one or two off in the distance. They're only little very faint lines, that's all, see? Um, but it's just telling you that there's something there, isn't it? 
And I think it works. No. And I'm going to try some um, lighter ones as well. I'll try and get some lighter ones in around here. That's it, that's a bit better. And we could even try some um, little trees, perhaps. Way, way, way off in the distance. Could we try some of those? Let's take a, sm a small rough flat brush. Some black and some yellow. And I'm going to just very gently, I'm just trying this now, it might not work. Suggest some little bushes and things off in the distance. It's worth a try, isn't it? So if you never try, you'll never know, isn't that right? Okay, just like that. That'll do. And let's just cut underneath those then again. With some light colour. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, right. How are we looking? We add a bit of highlight to one or two of these here, just here and there. Okay, that will do. And I'll stand back and have, have a look at this. Just have a good look. Uh, I'm gonna get some more titanium white and add lots of extra water in around here. So titanium white and flat brush again. By the way, you could use a fan brush for this as well. That would be a good idea. So titanium white. And let's go in here and add plenty of this water coming in and lapping up on that beach. Little flicks with the brush, you see, that's all I'm doing. Small flicks. And this is just a nice easy way of creating some little waves in the water. Okay, some little wiggles, you see. And indeed you can just mess about. Take some white and mess about on the, on the board or the canvas and just see what happens. That's very often the easiest way to paint. Just let it all flow and see what happens. Okay, there. See, it's nice, it's just, it's not overpowering, it's just a nice, um, a nice subtle kind of waves breaking in. Now let's take some of the pointy brush, and let's add a couple with that. add a couple of small ones, just little details here and there. Oh, by the way, I wanted to warm these hills as well slightly because I just wasn't happy with the colour on those. So I'm going to take some cadmium red with some cadmium yellow, just a little and a touch of white. And I really want to warm, in fact, so what now? Take some pink 
and you go up here and just add a touch of pink on those that will complement this colour then there and just pull it down is that better? And there and a little there. That'll do fine. Okay, so we have a little um, land, a bit of land coming out here as well, don't we? So I want to put this piece of land in. Um, it's only small, a small little bit, but nonetheless, we'll we'll put it in, will we? Now I want to take some. Cadmium yellow, mix it with a little tiny tiny bit of black and I'll take a touch of burnt umber as well look and as it's coming forward to us it's gonna get it's gonna start getting slightly warmer isn't it so I'm gonna just make the colours that bit stronger um now just have a quick look at this it kind of comes out like that it just comes out fairly flat doesn't it and then it kind of dips back like this and then we'll bring this land around the front like so now let's switch to a smaller brush so small flat brush give it a clean and should I zoom in for this or is it it's okay is it it's okay I think you can see it fine uh, so little bits of rock underneath this Wet your brush, dry it on a tissue, and let's take some burnt umber and let's go in there first with some burnt umber. Just pull it down in vertical strokes all the time. And put it right down there. Now don't worry if it mixes with that water underneath this, that's fine. So I'm just creating the edge of the rock here now, okay? Now a bit of black, a bit of brown. And let's go in here, like so. And out into the water it goes slightly. Bring it down here like this. And there we have a nice little, well, the beginnings of a nice little cliff don't we? Now I'm going to take some black a little touch of cadmium red perhaps just to warm, keep it warm and I'm going to go right in here with that nice dark colour so it's really pretty dark now all the way along in here isn't it? And I'll take some black on its own Darken that down a bit there. So you can see now I'm just building on top of the paint all the time. And it's wet into wet. And we go right in here now with this dark colour as well. And let me think now. I might mix a very dark purple just for that corner there. So I'm going to take some phthalo blue. And some of that crimson. And I'm going to go right in there with that dark colour. That's a bit better, I would say. So there. It's not half bad now, is it? And then we can take a small pointy brush and got some real blacky darks in there. Let's just take some black and with the pointy brush just a couple of vertical lines here and there just to suggest some bits of rock and that type of thing. And 
and we'll add some highlights then as well. So I'm just going along now, darkening down all of this, making it nice and rich. Okay, that'll do. Um, I might just make the edge here a little more rough. Um, there we go, that's, that's a bit better there now. Okay, following that, um, I'm going to go up here and darken some of these because I'm still not 100% happy with all of this up here. So I'm going to go in there and just darken some of that down. This is kind of in the shadow, so it will be quite dark. You won't see much um, light from this because this is kind of the backside of the cliff. So it's going to be pretty dark. I'm gonna just now these are these are things that you can do afterwards as well once you've finished the initial painting you can kind of go along and add little touches here and there uh, which is what I would normally do anyway um, but yeah I'm kind of fiddling as I go along but that's okay that's fine too now let's take a touch of cadmium yellow touch of Naples yellow touch of white and a touch of cadmium red and I'm going to get some nice warm highlights here and there on some of those rocks they're really subtle but they make a difference they really do I'll take some burnt cyanide and I'm ok, did you see that? Well, it does make a little bit of a difference. Just the odd one here and there. And that's that section done. Now I want to cut in front of that with another piece of green here. So I'm going to take some cadmium yellow with some white. And I mix it all right into this green that we had. And I'm going to just cut in front of all of that there, look. With my nice bright colour. And immediately that pushes everything back off, doesn't it? And something else I just thought of, just so you see. I'm thinking of things as I go along. I'll just get a small flat brush and take some Naples yellow, some cobalt blue little white with a little yellow, so I have a very pale, pale, bluey kind of a green there now. I'm just going to add a touch of light, that light colour, just along here and there, just to push that all further into the distance, okay? And I'll add a touch of that up here also. Um, it's always kind of a good idea when you have a colour on your brush, use it, you know, yeah, that's, that's a bit better. So let's go with this, let's fill this in, yes, take my medium stubby brush, dampen it, make sure you've no blue or anything on that now, just give it a good clean, dampen the brush and let's go into some cadmium yellow, some burnt cyanide. And let's take a touch of black. So again, I'm kind of going with earthy colours for this as it comes closer. Now that's a bit brown, isn't this? A bit on the brown side. So let's add a touch of black into that. Fill it in right across with your brush. You can use a big brush for this if you like. No worries. And I have to say now, I'm gasping for a cup of tea. I'm just going after this and getting myself a nice cup of tea, a nice strong cup of tea, and admire my paintings. Isn't that right? Because you really should um, be proud of what you're painting. Even if it doesn't turn out as good as you hoped, look, it's only paint, and you should be proud of what you have achieved. Don't knock yourself down because. I've seen many paintings sell for a lot, a lot of money and they were basically just scribbles of paint on the canvas and that just does not do it for me. 
So be proud if you create any kind of a landscape, be proud of it and show it off to everyone. Show it off to all your friends. Because you put a lot of work into it, no matter what kind of a painting it is. Now, even abstract painting is the same. Um, everybody gets something different from their work. But abstract is just not for me, I'll be honest. It's not my cup of tea, as they say. Now, let's have a look at this. You see, I'm going to keep this really dark down here, right? Because I'm going to put some nice highlights on it very shortly. So I'm going to take more black, more blue. And I'm going to really darken that just down on the front there. And it does take a bit of practice now to get used to this MDF board because it's so smooth the paint just kind of glides right along it, don't it? It does take a bit of practice but when you get the knack of it, I think you'll, you'll get there. Now, um, lots of grass and that kind of stuff here, yes? We will have a go with a fan brush. Now I'm thinking because it's a very smooth board um, I want to try and use soft brushes, so I'm going to look for a soft fan, if I had one. Ah, so I have a new fan brush here, okay, nice and soft. These are the ones that are kind of full of paint and they're very, very hard and rough. I don't want that. Um, nice soft fan brush. I think I'll take some, I won't dampen it because this is quite wet. Um, I'll take some cadmium yellow pale and some white and let's go let's go here yes let's dab that very gently just with the tip of the brush now okay I'm just dabbing very 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 gently look at that look how easy that is to create some lovely grass isn't that just amazing I might take a touch of burnt sand eh? Warm it slightly. So you can change colours as you're going along. And let's bring this all the way down here. Softening that now down into the dark colour. And isn't that a lovely bit of texture there now that we have already? Isn't that just amazing? So let's take some more Born Sienna Cadmium Yellow A touch of white And we can even do a couple of flicks here and there, look See? That works also Just very very random flicks of paint Here and there This is so much fun, or what? Isn't it? I might put one or two rocks in here as well. So I don't have to be too particular with all of this. Understand? Now a nice light point here just to separate those two bits of land. And let's get some nice bright highlights in here as well. Let's just say this along here. Let's just imagine the sun is kind of really catching some of these here and there. Okay. And you can even with your small pointy brush add a few grasses with your small brush too. Let's try it. Okay, a little bit of paint on your brush. A couple of little flicks here and there. Just great fun. I 
we could even add some little dabs to suggest some little flower heads, that type of thing. Just there. Now let's just take a step back and have a quick look at how we're getting on. I might um, add some warmth, so I might bring some of that colour down here, just here and there. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes, let's try it. Let's take a touch of red. Let's take a touch of burnt sienna, touch of white, and perhaps some Naples yellow as well. And add some of that nice pinky colour just here and there. So it could be just coming along and catching the ground. The sun is coming along and casting along that floor. And it's just catching it here and there. That's enough. So what about some rocks? I'm thinking about putting a couple of, now there's rocks on the photograph, I might put one or two rocks in here. Um, I'm just thinking I might lighten some of those areas just here and there. I'm just still not 100% happy with that. So I might lighten them just ever so slightly. Um, yeah, with some nice bright kind of a sunlight colour. So let me take some more cadmium yellow there. And I don't know if I should zoom in for this. Um, perhaps I will. Let's zoom in slightly, yes? Now, hope you can all see that. Well, I get some nice sunlight on these. So I'm going to take some cadmium yellow. And a touch of cadmium red with some of the white. And I just want to indicate... Well, that's a bit yellow, isn't it? So, I'll take some more white on my palette there now. I'll take some more white and I'll take more red. So it's going to be more pinky. Ah, that's better now. That's much nicer. So just here and there I'm going to flick that across so it's kind of glant the sun is kind of glancing across the land. Understand? And it's just catching it just here and there. And you can even drag it with your finger as well to soften it back into the colour. And let's take a little here. So now that's a bit that's a bit nicer, isn't it? And add a touch along here. And add a touch of pinky colour just along here and there, off in the distance. And I would say that's okay. I would probably leave that. And that's all right, isn't it? That's a bit nicer. Let's um, let's add a touch of it up there. And perhaps a little just around there. Just to warm it very slightly. And uh, yeah, I think that's a bit better already, don't you? So now, let me fix my camera again. Alright. Uh, rocks. Let's put in a couple of rocks. So look, we're coming this far, we might as well keep going. And I also want to add more white to the ocean up there. Um, do you know what? We'll go with the white first. Let me roll up my sleeves and let's take some white and I'm going to make, take almost a bit of pink in that as well. Just a little. And just a couple of little flicks here and there, look. And that's helping already, I think. So just make it your own, basically. Okay? You can just mess around with this for ages and ages and just make it your own. It's your painting, you can do what you like. 
And if you find later on that there's too much water splashing around, you can just go over it with some dark blue. Not to worry, okay? I think that's a bit better. And we could even add some along here as well. Just a couple. Let's bring a couple out along here. Just to break up this area, just slightly, yes? So you can imagine there's rocks under the water as well, causing these waves to kind of break along here. Okay, it's not bad. I'm going to add a little dark along this side. So I'm going to take some cobalt blue, some crimson, and I'm going to add a couple of darker shades just in here. Now, also, I'll take a fan brush and I'm going to just make this a little bit whiter and a bit brighter there. So I'll go to the corner of the fan brush and let's brighten that up a little bit there as well. You can even take some of that pinky colour that we used earlier. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Add a touch of pink in there. Okay, that's a bit brighter. And then we take our small flat brush again. Take some more white. And let's just go over some of those with some thicker paint. I suppose the trick with this is knowing when to stop, isn't it? I always find myself, when I'm painting something like this, I go on and on and on, I keep going at it and sometimes that's not good it's um it's good to know when to stop and when you think enough is enough let's just leave it well alone but yeah i'm going to just add some white hair in there <clears throat> because the right the whites are what really catch your eye you see they they dry your eye in so when you walk past a painting like this you see a lot of white water splashing around it just it makes you stop and look and it catches your eye. And it's about contrast, isn't it? Lights and darks. So the lights will show off the darks and the darks will show off the lights. Isn't that right? Okay, that looks pretty good. Will we have a go at some rocks, yes? That's why not. Come on, let's, let's go for it. Let's take some black. And let's take some white. So that's a medium grey then, isn't it? A nice grey. Let's paint the rock here with a nice grey look. I'm just going to make up my own rock. And look, it's mixing with the green, that's fine, I don't care. Take some black, let's take some tail of blue and some red. Black, tail of blue and red. That's a lovely combination for a dark grey, isn't it? And I must get more black, my black has gone from the palette. There we go. It does go a long way, these colours. Some of the colours are very, very strong and they do, they do go very far. Right, some black and some brown. And let's darken this side of the rock with that colour. And you can see now, because it's wet into wet, all the colours are just mixing in together, aren't they? And that's fine, I don't mind. Black and some blue here. And look, I'm making this side the dark side, so I'm just going to wiggle it like so. Pulling my brush down in the, the direction of the rock. Okay? And then we can dip into some brown, some burnt umber on its own. Add some of that in there. See? And we could take some pink with some blue. 
make a nice shadow colour in there. So you can see now just adding all these together on the board. Okay, then let's go to the light side. Clean our brush very quickly and let's take a nice vibrant bright colour now. Some napal yellow with some red there, look. And some white. And the sun is really hitting this. Isn't it? See? Nice thick colour. Just go right on. Go for it. Don't be afraid. Don't be worried that you're going to ruin your painting. You won't, I promise. Oh, look at that now. Yeah, that's a nice, really bright rock, isn't it? Nice, bright highlight and nice, rich dark. And let's take a small pointy brush then. I'm going to mix some blue with some Nathal Crimson. And I'm going to just go down and add some of that bluey purpley kind of colour here and there and then go along here a little bit there on the back of this side okay I'm just being very rough very messy with this then let's go to some of the bright colour Cadmium red, napal yellow. And I'll just refine some of those highlights, just a little. Now, how is that? for an old rock. Is that okay? Nice, simple rock. Okay. Then, we shall take our fan brush and of course, we have to make this sit down, don't we? Because at the moment, it's just floating in midair. So let's mix a nice green and let's just go along and tap that green in there. Let's look, here and there. And of course, we need to have a shadow, don't we? Because there's going to be a lovely shadow cast from this. So let's take some black and some blue and some yellow. Make a very dark, very, very dark green. And let's just dab that here and there behind that rock, look. Isn't that so easy? Okay, nice shadow. Now, to balance this out, I'm thinking we'll put one or two small ones just here or there. Now, they're not in the photograph, but look, we can use our license, can't we? We do have a license. Let's, let's try it. Okay. I'm gonna put one just here. Nice small little one. And I put another one an even number is always best, isn't it? That's what they say. They say an even number. I put another one here, look. Make it slightly different. And I'll darken the right hand sides of those. And then I'll clean my brush again quickly and I will put some of the bright colour on as well. So again, just a little flick down with your brush. Okay, remember following that direction. Always following the same direction of the rock, the way it's falling. All right. A little touch of burnt sienna, just to warm it very slightly. And in fact, I might put a touch of burnt sienna on this one as well, because that's quite nice. There. 
and then a very dark black just here and there at the bottom look I'm just kind of dabbing the brush around here and there so now what must we do what must we do with those now you tell me yes that's right we have to sit them down don't we little bit of green on them fan brush little bit of dark green and there straight away they've sat down on the floor haven't they so how are we looking so you know what we did forget to do we've got a little bit of white just in there with the water ah isn't that silly so add a touch of white with our brush there couple of little flicks just just a couple and uh, again thank you very much for your help and support and for watching my tutorials I know there are so so many um, artists out there each one unique and fantastic but thank you so much for choosing to watch some of my tutorials also because it, it really it really gives me a boost and a bit of a kick as well and it encourages me also to want to get better and to better myself so thank you very very much for that I really do appreciate it I really really do and I know I keep saying that but I can't emphasize enough how much it means to me that you're watching my tutorials and that you're taking the time to put a nice comment in there as well and that makes all the difference to me believe it or not um, I suppose I feel like I've been accepted as an artist and I've been accepted onto YouTube and that you value the work that I do um, so yeah it's fantastic I love it So what do we think? A couple of seagulls, yes? I think we need one or two seagulls up there. Tiny, tiny bit of white. A little bit of white on a pointy brush. And what side shall we go for? I suppose we go for the right hand side, will we? Let's go up here into this dark cloud. And it's just a bendy V, that's all. Okay, again, three seagulls and a touch of black on the point of your brush. Tiny, 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 tiny bit of black and a little flick on the edges of the rose then. And then for the feet, two little dots. There. Job done. How is that? Um, I'm just going to refine one or two of these shadows. And you see, again, you can kind of go back and add little touches to them. So I think I'll leave it like that for now. I think all I need to do is sign. Remember, it's the most important part of any painting, the signature. It's not what much without a signature, is it? So let's hope this one sells in the exhibition. I really hope it does. If not, I will probably put it on my Etsy page and sell it really, really cheap, to be honest. There. Yes, Conway. So let me zoom in now again for you. I know you like me zooming in on the painting every now and then. So we start at the top, look at that lovely sky, look at that. And the cliffs, just plenty of white, that's all it is. And I might soften some of those highlights in just a little bit with my finger because it's so far off. And we come up then to those lovely clouds. Aren't they fantastic? 
and our little birds. And we have our little hills off in the distance. Isn't that lovely? And we come down. More water there. Isn't that just fantastic? So yeah. Look at that. And the rocks sound out fantastic as well, didn't they? I think they're quite nice. Very, very easily done. A couple of quick brush strokes, that's all it was. See? So there we go. Ah, I have a frame. See, I forgot about that. Now I have a frame that I want to put on this. Where, ah, here it is. A frame for the painting. Let's have a look and see what this looks like. So now, look at that. And I think that is, I think that's a seller, don't you? That's fantastic. I'm very, very happy with that now. I really am. Now, so let me turn the camera here so you can see me. And this contraption I'm using, oh God, poof. look at this thing. Right, that'll do, that'll have to do. I'm gonna get a nice cup of tea, I need a cuppa. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, a lovely one this week. I enjoyed lo mixing lovely colors and you can see now how I kind of use my own colors, but use the sketch from another photograph. Um, I like doing that a lot. It helps you develop your, um, your tones and learning about contrasts, that type of thing. So until next week, thank you very, very much to all my patrons. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for your support. Um, and next week I'm thinking snow scene. I think, I think. Just to change it up a bit. So we'll have a couple of seascapes hanging and we'll have a snow scene and then something else. Maybe something with a building, something from Cork so people will recognise a painting like that. Um, yes, I think I should do something. I was thinking actually, it's just an idea, something black and white. I have a lovely photograph of the local market here. It's like a butter market. It was a, book, a butter market. Um, a very old building with big columns on it. And I was thinking about changing that to a black and white and maybe add like an old cart or something on the road. You know, something like that. There's a couple of photographs online that I saw similar to that. I was thinking that might be nice too. Just, you know, working with a simple tone. Black and white. You know, could be something different. So, um, let me know what you think. Let me know your comments. Let, send me your work for my advice. Um, I'd love to help you along. So send any email and any questions you have to stephencomment12 at gmail.com if you want my lovely brushes. Stephen Carmel 12 at gmail.com. Alright? This is Easy Oil Painting signing out. I'll see you next week. God bless.